Sal. Thanks, LV. Weekend AM Live on SAFM. Now, we also want to engage with you. We are sitting here today at the inaugural Science, Technology and Information, uh, Innovation rather, Summit, uh, live from Limpopo, and we would like to get your thoughts on, on this issue. Uh, the, the question that we want to pose to you this morning is, uh, how can science, technology and innovation be used to spearhead, really, uh, economic uh, development in South Africa? As you know, that innovation is the capacity to generate, acquire and apply knowledge to advance our uh, e- e- economics and, uh, of course, our social purposes. It includes the certain for frontier uh, technologies driven by research and development as well as the forms of learning and adaptation that might be uh, to market lead and uh, social drive and um, in fact it's it's something that we, we call doing all things in new ways now that's what we're going to do now um, this morning also uh, we had earlier speaking to us, Derek Hanekom, about science and technology. But we would also like to, to speak to some of the role players that's here at the summit. And uh, we'd like to welcome uh, some of the CEOs of the state-owned enterprises like the NEL, uh, ESCOM, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Transnet. We're expected to also attend uh, the, um, the summit. Now, to share some perspectives on business, we are joined by Dr. Andy Langaba. Uh, from Dimension Data, he is the chairman of uh, Dim- Dimension Data. So uh, let's chat to uh, the chairman. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Now, first and foremost, your perspective in terms of this summit. I think this is a great event. Uh, I must say, I did congratulate earlier both uh, the minister and the DG mm-hmm. really for putting together private sector, academia, you know, government, meaning parastatals, government departments to really look at uh, science and technology in our country. As you probably will know, it's very easy to fall behind in the world in this field of science and technology. You need to continue to research, you need to continue to ensure that you know you can advance science to solve both local problems, regional problems, and again, you know, the problems that confront humanity. I think to gather here this weekend in Limpopo and be able to look deeper into, you know, both the way we do research as a country, the way we partner between public and private sector, and some of the specific areas, you know, to look into, whether it is core technology, i.e. it could be electronics, it could be software, it could be technologies that are applied in health, or in building sciences, in different areas that really would advance, you know, human development. So, I think it's a great, great event, and uh, you know we we all are looking forward to engage each other and be able to come up with solutions at the end of the day. From where you sit, what do you want to take away from the summit? I think the the critical issue is how do we system in terms of research and development in the country, mm-hmm. meaning how, for instance, we don't work in silos. How can public sector and private sector work together? Mm-hmm. You know, how do we you know support entrepreneurs who Every day they wake up, they try to innovate something, to be able to change people's lives or to be able to build businesses for themselves. From Dimension's, uh, Dimension Data's perspective, what do you bring to the table? I think we have a, a global footprint. We operate in over 50 countries and we have deep expertise in certain technologies such as cloud computing. This is what we provide in different parts of the world. And again, this is a new area, basically, that we believe that one not only will save costs for government, not only will ensure that computing can be as pervasive and you can be able to provide, for an example, education content. You can be able to build big data in health applications where you can be able to do analytics and understand the impact, for instance, of certain diseases in society and also be able not only to stand up and teach children, but all that content can be kept and be loaded and that children can be able to come back to it Mm -hmm. and look at what the teacher said, whether beginning of the year or last year or many years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is what cloud computing does. And we believe that, I mean, there's a lot of work that we need to do, not only to build cloud and big data, but to also develop for instance, uh, languages, African languages, by building what is called digital dictionaries, so that, well, my name, Andile, does not get underlined when, for instance, you write it in your computer here, you know, that the computer can recognize it. Mm. So these are some of the things that we are talking about today to say we need to develop 
for instance, G, that will relate to our languages. We need to develop technology that will enhance learning. Mm -hmm. We need to develop technology that will make us understand better some of the issues that confront society, be it disease or health issues. And, and, and that is really how science and technology impact on the communities. Doesn't exactly. It? Yeah. Now, now, moving forward, Doctor, um, what role do you think should private sector uh, be playing in science and technology, research and innovation? I think, um, I mean, most companies and government departments, each organization, they spend money in research and development. I think today it's becoming very clear that, you know, to be able to have a much bigger impact, right, there is a need to collaborate in doing certain things. I mean, the, the cost of doing business, I mean, must be reduced, and the issues, for instance, that are related to the speed to market, the way in which you develop technology and how it reaches market, these are things that have to be, for instance, uh, dealt with. So what we believe that this conference should look at is how, for instance, companies like Dimension Data can partner with Parastatals, mm -hmm. right? Rather than Parastatals to try and do cloud services themselves. I which mean, is not their, their niche market. Which is not their niche market. How do we work together to ensure that we can be able to build these platforms, yeah. right? Rather than, you know, somebody trying to do something on their own when they don't have enough capability or skill. But of course, there must be knowledge transfer, there must be technology transfer, there must be collaboration in doing these things for the benefit of government and also for the benefit of private sector. Now, being an ignoramus in technology, in the technology field, I would ask you, you talked about cloud computing. Does that link with convergence? Well, let me put it like this. Cloud computing, I mean, let me give you an example. <laughs> we are now at the studio, right? Yes. Cloud computing, you can be able to store SAFM programs mm -hmm. for the next 20 years in a cloud computing I mean, architecture or infrastructure. So we can do it right after this program. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, representing also Convergence Partners, I mean, we, we worked on a satellite some time ago. As I said earlier, we, 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 we are part of SICOM, which is the undersea fiber that brings internet into various parts of Africa. Does it make it cheaper, though? Very cheaper. I mean, I think it's, that's the critical issue. Cheaper it's and faster. Faster and cheaper. I mean, the cable we built is about 1.2 terabits per second, mm -hmm. but upgradable, you can go to 2 terabits per second. But the, the critical issue is, I think, I mean, Africa is going to have 1 billion mobile phones in the next mm -hmm. 2 or 3 years, right? Mm -hmm. And and these phones have to be smartphones. They must be able to access internet. I mean, young people must be able to use them homework, must, must be able to use them you know, to exchange information that will enhance their, you know, their quality of learning. So these are all things that we look at and we believe that, you know, we will share with people today. And also, one very important area is how you talked about parastate health and companies. The critical other third part are academic institutions, yes. universities. I mean, we do a lot of work today, not only with universities, but with schools. Because, as you know, that, you know, in order for us as business, we need to continue to produce skills. Mm -hmm. And that skill will come from, you know, young people that we need to develop them so that they can be, you know, future scientists. And therefore, the need for research to be done. The need for research, they need to invest in learning. They need to invest in academia, basically. Moving forward, Doctor, from Dimension Data's perspective, um, how do you see South Africa growing, moving forward and utilizing science and technology um, to basically spearhead economic development in the country? I think critical, really, the, the, the most important thing is that uh, we, we need, I mean, in our view, I mean, uh, we need to make it a point that, you, you know, there's an argument that people always talk about to say, is it possible to give a, a, you know, a tablet to every child? The answer is yes. If you calculate textbooks that are given to children and the price of them and the price of books that are given, it's probably equivalent to the price of a tablet, right? Or I'm not, I don't want to say an iPad because you use an iPad. I'm just saying a tablet generically. So that's basically what is happening. Doctor, it's thank you so much for your time. We, we need a lot more time, but unfortunately we've run out of time. That is um, the chairman of Dimension Data, Dr. Andile Ngaba. It is now 8 o'clock. It's time for the news. 
S A F M, South Africa's new.